All right, so you have us here. <laughs> um, my name is DJ Strick, and of course, you're at the Strick's Hub, and I have none other than my friend, Monty Weaver. Monty, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Strick. How you doing, man? Man, I'm great. Now that I have you on the show, like, we've been talking about this for a while, and uh, you sent me a couple of dates, and it's just so happened to work out that we could be here together and i'm excited about it so i don't have to be uh solo today yeah yeah it's good hanging out with friends man it was, it was good hanging out with you in person and then it's always good hanging out with you on live i'm excited for tonight and getting a chance to share about this awesome platform i'm a huge fan of one stream been using it for years and just excited to share uh to everyone that's here today it is going to be fun. It is definitely going to be that. But can I tell you a quick little secret? What do you got? It is you that hooked me on to One Street Live. <laughs> is that how to play your church videos pre-recorded like it's live? Like, how many views do you think you have on that one? Matter of so fact, I went and looked today because I knew I was going to be on with you. So when I made that video, it was 2020, and I had been using One Stream before that, about 2017, 2018. So I had never done a YouTube channel until 2020. Okay. And when I looked at it today, that video in March 2020, when it was uploaded, now has 207,000 views on this, on this platform, talking about one stream. That is awesome. You know, I haven't made one video like that yet. I haven't. I was like, why should I make it when Monty's already got it out there and he's got all of these views, man. That's really awesome. I'm excited for uh, being able to see a content creator like yourself take what you started uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. Like you caught the real, we talk about the wave, you caught the wave and you rode it, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I need to update the video, man. One stream has come out with a whole bunch of new features. We got the beta studio and the spaces and the embed. So I might have to do that video. We we might have to tag team that video. How about that? Well, between you and me, we'll use this video for some other <laughs> multi-purposing or repurposing type of video stuff. But we need to do one together talking about all the things that One Stream Live is doing. Now, if you're here with us today, please check in in the comments on YouTube is where we are. Tell us where you're from. And if you have a question, do me a favor, put a Q in front of your question, and then we'll try to answer. Because today, Monty, we're doing frequently asked questions. And, of course, we're going to go through the basics of One Stream Live. Okay, we'll go through the basics, answering some of the basic questions, but we may have people out there that are having uh, individual or personal uh, issues trying to figure out where something is, and that's why we are here. And Steve has been hanging out with me in the comments earlier today in the community. He just hit the comments in Steve, man, thank you for coming to hang out with us, and uh, he's out of Arizona. Oh. It's hot out there. It's hot out there. It's definitely hot out there. It's hot out there. So, but we're glad that uh, he's here hanging out with us today. So, when you started, of course, it was 2020. Did you start Monty with the AppSumo deal? No, actually, when I was live streaming, I used to live stream with another platform, it was free open source platform, and it was great. However, one of the things I want to do was do pre-recorded videos. So one stream, when it was announced, it was like the only one that I was aware of that allowed you to do pre-recorded videos. So I bought full out the uh, uh, one stream package. And then I saw later on that it became available on AppSumo. So I have multiple one stream accounts. So I have one that I've paid for. I've since don't pay for that one because I do have the AppSumo deal, but it was really good to get the, the, the top level one stream on the app sumo deal um, and pay that one time fee and now have all of the features and, you know, fee, fees and live streaming subscriptions and all that stuff it adds up. So when you can find a really good deal for a really good platform, it just makes sense. It does. And, um, and that's exactly what I did. I saw the demo deal, have to get it. And I, I've got everything I could get in that particular deal. You know what? For what I paid, let me be honest with you, trying to do pre-recorded video like it was live for me, for what I paid for the AppSumo deal, that was a great deal. Like oh, yeah. if they didn't do anything else, if I know this is my one source, because that's what I was 
wanting at the time just one source to be able to play pre-recorded video like is live. I honestly think that what I paid through the Absomo deal, if the software just did that, it would be enough. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And especially more so now for me, I'm looking to do more pre-recorded videos because my evenings are more so taken up with family obligations and and ministry obligations. And I know my audience, though, they're available in the evenings. So if I record my content in the daytime, that works better for me and then play it pre-recorded in the evenings. Like you said, that in itself is worth it. You know, not even... The, the other features and multi-streaming. If I could just play the one recorded video to my main platforms, oh, hands down, I could schedule it, set the time. I know it's going to start on its own. I know it's going to end on its own and I don't have to look at it. Oh, hands down, best platform that allows us to do that right now. So what do you think about the use case of having that pre-recorded video, but actually playing it multiple times, like maybe putting it in a playlist or looping it to play like every other hour or every four hours. What do you think about that as an option with one stream? Yeah, I, I, I like it. And, and I think a, a lot of it involves testing and I like playing multiple times. I've watched some of the ministries um, do it multiple times. They've actually played their live service. Um, and then I'll get home and I'll see, oh, they're playing the replay. So it allows me to catch the replay. But sometimes I'm tired and I can't watch the live replay. So in my mind, I'll just, you know, catch it when it's done. And then I'll see it stream again later that evening. And I'm like, right. oh, this is nice. And it's something about the live aspect that people want to be a part of the live. Even though we know we can watch the recording of it, it's something about it. We see it live and we feel that we can engage with it. And you see other people that are engaging with it. So now you're a part of it. You're, you're just not watching a replay by yourself. So I like the fact that you can play it multiple times over uh, that one piece of content now can go live and reach people that are just waking up on the other side of the world. And that's one of the reasons I really started pre-recorded content. I saw other people watching the content because I, I, I made a mistake strict. I, I left my video playing on a loop on accident with one of the softwares I was using. Okay. And I just noticed I had thousands of views when I woke up. And I was like, wow, why is this video? And I was like, oh my gosh, I did stop the video. So playing videos at 2 a.m. while you're sleeping and still getting views from people around the world, getting, you know, you're getting exposure. That's something that people should definitely try it out and, you know, see how it works for them. So this is not a frequently asked question, but because you brought it up, I might as well throw in what OneStream Live could do. You know, you actually, through OneStream Live, based on the subscription that you have, can play up to eight hours at a time. So basically, you can have a revolving video playing for eight hours and then have another revolving video playing for eight hours. And you just do that multiple times until you get to your 24-hour set. So you can have a 24-hour loop. Wow stream live so a lot of times people are using like a computer and they have to manipulate the computer playing looping but right now uh based on your subscription level so if you have the pro level eight hours per stream so basically you can have is you could do it multiple ways so if you have uh, maybe a four hour video you loop it twice, that's your eight hours in one stream, and then do that thing at the same time, have it triggered right at the end of the last of the at the end of the first eight hours, and do that for three other times, and you have 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's so many ways that you can, you know, get your message out there and using the pre-recorded aspect is is one of those ways that I think had it had its wave and I think it died off, but I think it's gonna come back once people really understand the power of you know how it can work for them so i watch a couple of different things a lot so when i'm working i'm one of those kind of people if you can tell i have a tv behind me i'm watching my computer that i actually use for work is in front of me okay behind me is a uh, is a tv that i could watch youtube videos on and i basically just turn around and watch mm -hmm. and uh, what happens is i like to have the lo-fi chill music going while i'm working mm -hmm, mm -hmm. guess what those things are 24 hour videos yeah that yeah. are just rotating and have millions of views on them. So just an idea, if you wanted to have a second YouTube channel or a third YouTube channel and you want to get into the chill hop music or any kind of music that you can play over and over again that's licensed, 
uh, the trick is uh, YouTube already gives you licensed music that you can use. Take their music, put it in a video with a loop, have your nice little cover video that's looping at the same time. A 24-hour channel that, you know, in time, like I wouldn't, I'm not going to tell you have a million views day one, but you have to start somewhere, right? Yeah, and those channels get monetized and you get your your uh, YouTube play buttons and yeah, that's, that's another revenue source just from using pre-recorded videos. The other ones I watch is they have, uh, I, I love like the Science Channel and I like, you know, they have this new James Webb. Uh, telescope is out in space right now so I'm watching all of these videos talking about the James Webb and sometimes I pass one that's live and basically all they've done is taken several of the videos and put them back to back you know they're not live videos it's not live they're old videos but they're back to back playing like they're live and, and I'm sharing this just in case someone had a question about how do you work that like what's the use case for a looping video? What's the use case for, uh, you know, how could I use 24 hour video? Like there's tons of 24 hour videos out there. And of course, like Monty, you, you know, there's potential two o'clock in the morning. Like if it's two o'clock in the morning in the States, uh, if you are thinking worldwide, it's easily two in the afternoon somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's just my tidbit on that. Yeah, so yeah. let's do this. Uh, I started with that and we kind of went on a tangent. I could talk about all this stuff, the technical side of this all day long. Some people may want to know like the basics. Let's go down to the basics of pricings and subscriptions. And what I'm going to do now is share my screen and I want to kind of talk through it. We are AppSumo users and, you know, not to have any type of hierarchy with uh one stream live, but we are so happy that the company is a company of their word and has some integrity. Because as they have added on new features and new plans, they haven't forgot about the people that they said they would not, they would allow all the new features for the AppSumo people to have the new features and they've continued that. And we are so thankful for that. Uh, if you're coming on to the stream, Please do me a favor. Let me know that you're watching us today and where you're from. And if you have a question, all you have to do is um, we'll make it easy for you. Just put a cue in front of your question and we'll get to your question. So right now, I want to see if I can make this as big as I can. See if this one will do it. And so... This is a comparison side by side of all of the plans. So uh, I didn't know this, but One Stream Live, guess what? Has a free offer. Make this as big as I can. There is a free offer for you, and basically, you have you can connect up to two social accounts, and you can live stream and multi casting is available with this, with the free one. So the basic is five, standard is 25, and the professional plan has up to 50 accounts, social accounts that you can add to it. All right, and extra accounts, add-ons, uh, paid plans are, are paid plans only. So there you go. That's really cool. You see anything there that kind of stands out to you? I like the free option. and. The reason I say that is not because it's free. It's more so it's a test route, test trial for anyone that's really looking to get started in using live streaming platforms. I know that video streak, they got 207,000 views. People were like, it's only for a few minutes. And I'm like, yeah, it's only for a few minutes because it's free. With right. all the features that OneStream gives you, you're not going to get these features if there aren't people buying the, the packages that allows them to put together the resources to build these custom things out and uh, all the new rollouts with, with like one studio and the servers. Like I, I'm a techie, so I know what goes into the back end and you can't do that with free options. But the free option does allow people to test the waters with this platform. I highly recommend the highest tier option if you're going to be live streaming for any length of time if you're looking to really incorporate that into your content creation process but there are package levels for everyone no matter what their budget is 
So it does come in with the free version at 10 minutes and the standard or the basic version at 30 minutes and standard is two hours. And of course, professional plan has eight hours of stream durations that you get. And that's why uh, I was talking about with the eight hours, you can just do it four times and get 24 hours there. So that's really cool. And I agree, you know, if you're streaming for 10 minutes and it's absolutely free that you can multi-purpose for other things, I mean, what's your investment in that, Monty? Like, how much did you invest in that? Oh, man, for, for 10 streaming. minutes. Is, if you're streaming for 10 minutes with zero investment and oh, you yeah. can potentially garner any type of audience, I mean, you hadn't paid anything for it. You're, yeah. you're winning. Yeah, one of, one of my clients, she is actually doing these really 15-minute podcast episodes. So it's very easy to do 15 and just knock that down to a 10-minute podcast episode. And you, can, you really can create a bunch of content using a, a platform that allows you to record the video live stream. Cause yeah, you can actually record using one stream. You can live stream using one stream, or you can upload your content from other platforms and display that using one stream. So no matter what you're looking to create for as video, you know, you can, there are things you can do in 10 minutes and really maximize that opportunity. And, you know, I do want to say what I have, top with these prices this is uh saving you 20 percent if you pay for it up for the year okay pay for it up for the year and you're saving 20 percent on the prices that gives you the eight dollars on the basic 32 on the standard plan and the professional plan at 66 all right um so what happens when you go up further now that I'm seeing some of this, Monty, is that you do get a high resolution with the uh, professional plan. Everything else is at uh, 720p. And the difference there is if people, if you're on Facebook, you know, that's the highest resolution you can get anyway. Yeah. yeah. And if you're doing YouTube like we are, you definitely want to do 1080p if you can. Right. The best look that you possibly can get for the platform, All right? So you get the background effects, um, starting at the basic plan, background music, uh, media share is starting with the standard plan, but you have uh, recording, store recording storage, which is important. Um, with the storage, you're actually able to go back to be able to use that as, uh, you know, for repurposing value. Yeah. Yeah, storage space uh, is vital these days. When you're recording all these videos and you're live streaming all these videos, you need a place to house. I, I was literally recording a YouTube video earlier to, earlier today, and I'm over here drive, driving files over to my Dropbox and uploading in the cloud and sitting here waiting. But with one stream, it's automatically there. Once you're done, it renders in the background and it sits in the cloud. You don't have to go and move it. You can just use the cloud storage that's already there for you. And I think that makes it so cool. So you, to be honest with you, if you are a live streamer, if you are making money, it is more than a hobby. The professional plan adds so much more for you. It adds so much more as a value to you. So I really, if I was, I really would be looking into that. Okay. Um, what else am I wanting to be sure that we talk about? Uh, again, the pre-recorded sessions is just like the live sessions as far as the duration of the time, 10 minutes for free, 30 minutes for basic, and two hours for uh, standard, and again, eight hours for the professional plan. I use that a lot, uh, Monty, with a lot of my clients. Um, you mentioned it earlier how churches are able to replay their live services later that day. I actually do it during our midweek service. We record at 12, and then we play it again that night at 7 p.m. So people that couldn't see the service at 12 o'clock, they can see it again at 7, and it's played like it's live. And there's, they can interact with that video anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. Yeah, That's all done through one stream. Yeah, and I like OneStream because it's an all-in-one platform. You can. It used to be just pre-recorded, but like I said, they they come just recently uh, opened up that beta studio for everyone. So it really is an all-in-one platform now to re 
pre-recorded videos and live streaming your videos. And of course, I'm over here just like logging in and all the different platforms you can connect to it. I mean, there's platforms I've never even heard of. And now, you're, you're looking at that. You can just tell me what you're seeing on your side as far as the platforms that people are available are able to use. Yeah. So once you log in, one of the very first screens um, on the dashboard allows you to connect your social media profiles and do I got screen share access? Strick, you give me screen share access? I haven't, but you can. Uh, you can oh, talk I don't. No, no, no. I don't want. I'll talk it through. I'll talk it through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm looking at uh, uh, Facebook, obviously, YouTube, obviously, LinkedIn, uh, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram is back here to connect to. TikTok is back here to connect to. Uh, Vimeo is back here to connect to. Uh, Telegram. I need to test out Telegram because I actually use Telegram. We, that is back here. Uh, one of the platforms I use for conferences is called View Stuff. And when I saw that back here, I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Because it makes my life on the conference side a little bit easier because I don't have to use their platform. I can use a platform I'm already familiar with. Even though I'm familiar with View Stuff, there's just some more things I can do in one stream that I can't do in View Stuff and it allows me to connect to that. Um, and then other platforms I've never even heard of before that have Kakio TV, Loops, mm -hmm. No No Live, All of that. Live. Like I've never even heard of these platforms. And so if you're looking to build an audience, you know, this gives you a good idea of just, hey, let me go investigate what this platform is and let me create a social platform over there and live stream to that platform. And without one stream, I know I wouldn't be familiar with you know that second half i'll say you know you guys got to go create a, a one stream account so you see what i'm talking about but that second half of the list of the profiles you can create and connect to there's a lot in there it's a lot it's a lot so i have to say this uh talk virtual is in uh our youtube in the comments and that's erica bates so hello erica thank you for being here again she is big on using as many platforms as possible like she streams to every platform Monday that you can possibly stream to and garner an audience. She says if it's there, you might as well use it. So I kind of agree with her with that in, in, the, in the sense that one stream gives you the opportunity to be in multiple places. And if you're not that, you know, the big YouTuber that everybody is coming to you, sometimes you have to go to where the people are. Yeah. You make a platform and then as it grows, you're able to say, hey, this platform has grown, grown faster than others. Or you say on those other platforms, hey, I really want everybody to move over to YouTube, but I'm going live here. Hey, guys, go to my YouTube channel and we can have a better conversation over here. So that being said, um, PR Investments uh, said that we had some great ideas. So um, who is that? Steve is saying, I love the banner, the tickers, display name and feature. So easy to set up inside of the studio. And it is. I'm actually using ours today. The only thing I don't have up is my banner. And I guess I could put it up since we're on this screen because we're going to talk for just a second, uh, answering some questions that's in our YouTube so give me one second to throw this up. Thanks for joining us tonight. One stream. There you go. That's me. All right. So we have one question, Monty, or that came in from PR Investments. You mentioned music that YouTube allows you to use on your channel. How do you find this music? That's an easy question for me, of course. Um, but I'll let you get it, Monty, if you would like. I'll let you take it because I don't know, remember exactly where it is, but I know oh. it's right here. So it, it is uh, with YouTube. <clears throat> it is in their music library. So if you're in your studio, you can just go to music and it's in the library. So you have to be on your channel in your studio and then you have access to all of that music. OK, so they have different genres that you can search through and find the music for you and. I think there's some great music there, and then there's some music that absolutely sucks, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but it's license-free music to actually play through YouTube. So if you're a music producer, I, I would really recommend you throwing up some music on YouTube, allowing it to be ad added to the library, and every time someone plays it, of course, you get paid as the producer of that song. I'm not saying that anyone is getting rich, but there is a business case 
for making streamable music on social media platforms right now. Harris Keller, I think I said his name right, but he started a business that's making more money as a YouTuber with his licensed music that people in the background while they're playing games. Like he's really doing well with that. That being said, go to your studio and on the left hand side, as you go down the menu, there should say audio or library, audio library, and that's where you library. find it. That's where you find it. I've, okay, good, good. Yeah, and then you can also do sound effects in there too, which is cool because the first tab after you click audio library is the music, and then the next little tab over are sound effects. So if you want to add a little bit more to the videos, you can grab all of that inside of there. So, yeah, that's a good question. And basically, those those that music is downloadable that you could put on your in your production to then reload up to YouTube. All right, it's license free music to be played on YouTube, sound effects and everything. So YouTube is really trying to be a one stop shop when it comes to that. But Facebook has their library as well. You have to search that one out on where they have their music, but they do have available music. And uh, if you're doing reels and everything. You know, TikTok and uh, uh, Instagram have what they call in app music that's available to you as well. But good question. So, the next question from uh, BR Investments is Does the live stream integrate with LinkedIn Live? Great question. And, Monty, I think you may have already answered that question and where some of the social music media destinations are. Yeah, yeah. One of the destinations is LinkedIn. So once you connect your LinkedIn profile, hit go live. You're good to go. And this is something that's new. Now, it used to be in the beginning, so 2019, 2020, and early 2021, uh, you had to get approved to go into LinkedIn yep. live. So they have uh, been, what I did was join what they call the content creator um, group inside of LinkedIn, and that gives me an ability to go live as well. So have it available for you, but there may be some uh, groups that you have to get into or you have to turn your profile over to a creator profile to be able to have the ability to stream live. One stream live gives you the ability to go over there, but you still have to connect it with uh, LinkedIn. So you want to be sure that you have the, all the details that you need to do to actually have that set up for you. Great question. Great question here. Um, so there, there we go. I think that was the last question I had inside of YouTube. If you do have questions, guys, just remember to put a cue before your question so we'll be able to find it really easily. And if you haven't already hit the like button, do me a favor. Let us know. Let me and Monty know that you're liking the content we're doing today that is helpful for you. And the way you can do that is by saying like. I do like this. I appreciate it. All that kind of good stuff. That will really help us out. That being said, we're talking about pricings. We talked about subscriptions and social accounts and multicasting. So, of course, you're able to go up to 40 different sites with uh, one stream live <clears throat> excuse me and i think the idea is what monty said before same thing i talked about with erica you have the ability to go there why not try it right yeah that, that's a lot of sites that is a lot of potential viewers if, if you just got one viewer from each one of those websites you would probably have more viewers than most people have when they go live in general, just one person from each one of those different websites that you can connect to or social platforms you can connect to. So, you know, I think about this all the time, Monty, how um, Twitter lost steam with Periscope. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody, you know, we, we, we talk about, you know, everybody on Instagram, Instagram has a way for you to get there, but YouTube Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, when Periscope was really booming, it was like a really nice platform for you to be able to make content and to garner a great audience. And when they stopped it, they didn't stop it and say, we're turning over to Twitter. 
it was yeah. a couple of months in between where you could not go live on Twitter. But I think right now it's still a great platform. If you can find consistency on being on Twitter, that I think you could do some things that because a lot of people are not streaming their live anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Live, I thought was like back in 2016. I was pressing this. You got to go live. You got to go live. Do live video. Video was coming. And then it seemed like 2017 still saying the same thing. And 2018 still saying the same thing. And then in 2022, we're still saying the same thing. Like, go live on these platforms. It, it is a really good opportunity to get that exposure because most people won't go live. And especially like on a platform like Twitter, a lot of people don't even realize how they can go live on Twitter. So if you're like I said at the beginning, you know, you look back in one stream, and you see, oh, I can go live on these platforms. It kind of like lets the light bulb come on to to test that out and, and try it on that platform. That is so right. Why not give it a try? You have it. You're paying for it. Try to go. Now, if you're someone, again, I have to read myself. If you're a YouTuber and you got 100,000 subscribers, I get it. You know, to everybody where you are. But if you haven't made it to the partner program on YouTube, you no, know, you don't have an audience on Facebook. Like try to just multicast it out and garner some community. And as people come to your platform, migrate them to the best platform for your type of content. Now, I'm a YouTube guy, so I'm, I would always push people to YouTube. I just think it's the best platform for monetization, for to answer questions, all of that. But you may be doing something that's different. Um, we talked about this earlier, Monty, about the ability for some of your clients that just want to have people come to the page and not to the social media accounts. Yeah, yeah. When I was looking at some of the updated features that one stream has been rolling out, um, before we jumped on live, I was telling Strick about a, a client that I have for a wedding. And they don't necessarily want to have their live stream on their social media. They don't want to stream it to their Facebook. They don't want to stream it to their YouTube, but they have nowhere to stream it to because they don't have a website. And so one of the things with one stream allows you to do is uh, set up a, your own site uh, uh, spaces, live spaces, and you can have your site, you can brand it with your colors that you want. And if you do have a website, another option you have is the embed feature. And I, that's something I'm looking to personally do more of is live stream using one stream inside of my own website. So there may be some content that I don't necessarily want to put on YouTube. Uh, maybe I just want to be more carefree and just do it on my website because it's not really YouTube searchable content. But I can embed my video inside of my website. And going back just a couple of years ago, if you wanted to do something like that, you, it, it was it's a process. There are ways you can do it. You know, you, me and you, Strick, we talked about, you know, using our YouTube uh, and taking that code and making it unlisted. Uh, but if you don't if you're not technical and you don't know how to do it, you may right. miss a step somewhere. And, and where what step did I miss? But one stream allows you to just grab the code, hit copy, go to your website, hit paste. And it's right there and you can stream directly to your own websites. So there's a lot of features that are there. And I think a, a stream like this is, you know, hopefully a, an eye opener for different ways that you can use the software. Is it, it isn't just a one one way use. There's a lot of different ways you can uh, maximize, especially the pro plan if you decide to get that option. That makes sense. So basically, so you can have an embedded player that's going to your website or you can have your own custom URL that you can send to people and say, hey, this is where I am today with information. So there's so many different use cases for that. Monty said, hey, I, I just wanted to have my web page and I want to be able to do whatever content it is I want to do. that doesn't need to be searchable on YouTube. It's just where I want to do. So there's tons of content that you can send people to your web page to get. Why would you want to do that? Because you own the content that way. Mm -hmm. 
It's your content on your web page. You don't have to share it. You don't have to worry about any kind of rules or laws from that YouTube talks about or Facebook talks about. It is on your web page. It is free reign for you. Just want to be sure that you have some integrity about what you put on the web. Yeah. Okay. That being said, or you can say, hey, everybody, I'm on a Facebook, guys. This is the link to go to this live event that's happening right now. So you're taking them off the social media platform into your particular arena with live spaces that even has a clickable link or you can put it behind a paywall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the paywall. I love the paywalls. <laughs> Everybody wants to monetize, right? You know, I don't care if it's, uh, you know, a $5 pay subscribe subscription to that one event is monetized. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on what kind of audience you have, five dollars could go a long way. Yep, yep. And yep. Um, then you're able to have clickable links, or one link that's clickable inside of that. Your social tags inside of the live spaces, all of that's right there. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a really good feature to have. And you know, when I was going back there, you can brand it the way you want it to look and feel and. Uh, I know some of us that live stream a lot, we're always changing the colors. Like I'm wearing a purple shirt. I've changed the background colors to purple. So if my site is purple, you know, right. I want to stay on brand. So being able to choose your color codes and match it exactly like you want to is just one of those features sometimes we take for granted. It's just not like a black and white page. It's something that you can actually have a, a look um, to it so that you're staying on brand. So, um, BR Invest says this was great. I've had one stream for a while from the app Sumo. Have not been leveraging it. I will be definitely changing my strategy. I'm telling you, it is more than just pre recorded live video right now. It is the all in one solution for your streaming or pre recorded needs. Uh, there's just so much that the system is doing. As you can tell, it has garnered our attention. Uh, you know, we were using it as a utility belt for live, to, for pre-recorded video to be played as live, and that was great. Because what happened was there were some competitors that was trying to do the same thing, but the data that they were allowing you to upload was so low. I mean, you could do a 10-minute video with some of that stuff, but with one stream, they allow you to have the cloud integration with Dropbox or cloud integration with what I use, my Google Drive. So I was taking our, our 10 minute worth longer videos, right? And integrating that to one stream live where nobody else could do it, or if they could, it would have been the price point to do that. It was so high, I couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or it just didn't, it didn't make sense. Like, you know, we all want to make sure that we're getting the value out of it. And I think I think if people don't know the history of One Dream, they don't really understand, like, that's what their foundation was. It was pre-recorded video. That's the sole purpose of what it did. And to see how easy it was to do it, especially when I got wind of it, because using some of the other platforms that you installed on your computer, you could do it, but you manually had to be there. When do I want this video to start? And you had to hit start. And then if it was a half an hour video, you know, you go run your errands, do what you got to do. But when that video got to the end, you had to be back at your computer and hit the end button so the right. stream would stop. So when one stream came out and you could select the calendar date, like, I want this video to pay three weeks from now at 12 o'clock on a Saturday. You could totally go on vacation in three weeks from now, that video would play. By itself, it would start, it would go to the platforms you connected it to, it would end, and you would still be on the beach and forgot, oh, I had this webinar planned, and how did I generate sales? Oh, I had this scheduled webinar planned, and totally didn't have to do all of the manual process that went along with doing the other platforms. And being web-based just made it so much easier because it's not, not like locked down and tied to one computer where I got to play this video file. I can just upload it from the cloud, and it's going to play whether I got my laptop with me, I can log in from my mobile device, you know, with the file is already there because you can hold, I believe it's up to nine files in your queue, like in the cloud, in the queue that you can just go and choose from. So it just made things so much easier 
from that aspect. And that's still the main reason I use one stream. But now if I'm already in the platform and I can go live from it now too, well, why not? You know, I all my graphics that I want to use, all my banners um, we're showing off tonight. I got my ticker running across the bottom. So you get all the features and it's just easy to use. I know this is like one of the first time I've been a guest on one stream. Usually I'm the person that's bringing on guests. Right. So right. the little, the link you send, it was so easy just to click it. It's, I'm always thinking about the people that are like non-techies. I right. just click the link. It popped up. I select my microphone, my camera. And next thing I know, I'm talking to you, Strick, and it, we're getting ready to go live um, to share with everybody here on YouTube. And it's simple. Now, we'll say this. that's different than other platforms. This particular, through the beta with OneStream Studio, I have to make sure I say it right, because I always say OneStream Live Studio, but it's OneStream <laughs> Studio. Um, it, this is what they call action, okay? So each session has its own invite code for your guest. All right, so once that session is over, that code that you sent to someone is no longer usable. I want to say that to people. So it's not a question, but I'm helping you out. If you end the session and you want people to come back, guess what? You got to start a new session and send them a new code for them to come in on. I had to figure that out, you know, through using the beta, but I think it's really, really cool. Uh, you have one for each session, one invite code for each session. And it's really simple. Like Monty said, you just have the people uh, choose their microphone, choose their camera, and they're ready to go right into the session. Yeah, I, I actually like the fact that they changed the code because if anybody has a Zoom account, you know, if you have, you share out your personal one, if you, hey, I'm going to do a quick meeting, I'm going to share my personal code. Like I've had people log in just random times. And wow. you don't need people just randomly logging in. So if they know you're going to be live, you're doing a live weekly show, you always got somebody. There's always one in the bunch. They click, oh, oops, wrong link. I thought I was watching the show. You didn't join the show in the middle of the show. Um, so having a unique URL code for each every each person that's going to come onto the show, I think is it helps prevent something that could possibly go wrong. You know, going live, you always want to do your preventive preventative maintenance before you go live you know you want to do your sound check uh your video check but you also want to make sure that you lock the gates down so nobody just randomly joins your stream and so using that unique session uh url definitely prevents some of those uh other things from happening that you don't need to happen on your live stream that makes a lot of sense thanks for adding that so we do have another question in youtube i want to go over really quick when going live on facebook when do you enable the countdown uh, timer as Facebook requires you to launch the broadcast 10 minutes before it goes live and I do not actually know when I am seeing live. That's a good question. Now um, I haven't gone live in you from on uh, Facebook in a while. So Monty if I say something wrong help me out here now you're able to go live. If I have a session that is basically you should be able to go live on Facebook whenever you want to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can just hit go live now from the one stream studio or the one stream live system. And you should be able to connect to you to Facebook and go live and start with the countdown at five minutes. When I have a, um, a scheduled event and say tonight, this starts at six o'clock central standard time. I'm able to go through, one stream live through the studio or through one stream live the the older system i have to start at six o'clock and i normally start with the five minute countdown countdowns can be shorter uh with the new beta i wanted to be sure that everything is connected and you really want to give facebook and youtube a couple of minutes to connect i think um I'm not really sure what Facebook is. I know YouTube is about 40 seconds behind. So give those platforms time to connect with the countdown. It makes sense when you're doing a live session. So sometimes it's best to do five minutes because you may need time on your end to get things set up and you have that countdown going. And I use it for, Monty, I use the countdown just as a time for me to calm down. Yes and get ready because you have all those nerves going on you hit the button am i live here 
I live here. Okay, everything is good to go. Now breathe. Yep. Yeah, I'm a huge proponent of countdown timers for anybody that live streams and, and same for you stream. You know, as someone that's been doing this for a long time, you learn what works and, you know, how to how to maneuver around certain things. And if you immediately go live without a countdown timer, you're doing just what was asked in the question. You, you don't know when you're really live. And so the first people that jump on, they're going to jump on later down the line after you have got connected to the social platforms. So you're sitting there kind of waiting in limbo. And then the replay people, they're like, okay, why are we sitting here waiting? You know, I'm trying to watch the replay. So the countdown timer, it really allows for you to, what you said, Strick, connect, get the platforms connected successfully, allows the audiences to show up at that scheduled time. Now on Facebook, yeah, you, do, you have that, that window. So you have to start the stream, but starting the stream doesn't mean your face has to be there. Starting the stream is just your countdown is starting. Like the video is actually playing. Right. And so when that video is playing, it allows you to make sure that everything is working. It allows you to like click on your social profiles real quick and like is audio coming through YouTube? Is audio coming through Facebook? All right, cool. Do I see the countdown timer? Okay, I know the video is going. So that allows all the technical to be set up. Once I verify that it's set up, I don't look at the social platforms for for timing. I don't look to say, oh, I'm live on YouTube now or Facebook now. The countdown timer is my live. So once it hits zero, I know I'm live because I've already verified that I'm live on the social platforms because I heard the music. I saw the countdown timer. Right. So when it hits zero, you guys don't look on Facebook as like, oh, is not my camera over there? No, we've already got all the technicals out the way. So just start talking, deliver your message. And, it, and I'm glad you said that, Strick. Like, there is a delay. So right. if you're sitting there waiting for to see yourself, that's 40 seconds of time that is just weird. Like, what are we doing for 40 seconds? No, get to the point, get started, and just know that you're on a 40-second delay. And, you know, answering questions, you, you might ask a question on live stream. Know that it's going to take 40 seconds from the time you ask the question for someone to hear it. And then it's going to take another 20, 30, 40 seconds for people to type in the question. So you've got to kind of factor that in when you're live streaming that you you need some buffer time after you ask the question so that it allows people to, to type it in and then you see it and be able to respond. So. Just wanted to throw some of those other things just to think about when you're live streaming. But I love the question about countdown times. I think everyone should use them. They're very beneficial. I'm like you, Strick. I use at least a five-minute countdown. Sometimes I'll do 10 if I just want to give more uh, time, prep time, but at least a five-minute. That way I know all the technicals are out the way. So when we go live, I'm not asking, are we live yet? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so um, I've seen this happen before with people, my you, you people that are streaming that don't know the delay and they'll ask a question and then they will be looking in the comments for an answer. Like it's going to take a good minute before you get answers from that. So I know how to ask a question in the comments and then elaborate, elaborate, elaborate. And then when I see responses coming in, I can go back to the responses. So mm -hmm. that's just a little side tip for you guys. If you're if you're doing live streaming, Monty said it, and I'm just echoing the fact that uh, you look very professional when you give your people time to make the comments inside of the live stream. Now, I do want to say this. In the question that Steve gave us about but requiring you to launch the broadcast 10 minutes before it goes live. I'm not sure that that's automatically true. Um, now, want to go ahead and get your stream keys and your stream URL. Once you have that and you, um, well, I'm talking about a couple of different systems. Let me say this. What way we have it set up, if you have the account selected with one stream, they ask that you, I mean, you can go live at any point. So it's not a 10 minutes before you go live. Okay. So I want to be sure that if you, if you pick up your phone right now and hit the live button on Facebook, you can go live. If you go through one stream, one stream studio, you can go live at any point, even um, pre-recorded. Um, 
you are live and it's a scheduled event inside of one stream studio they're going to ask if you schedule the event at six o'clock you need to start the event after six o'clock okay that's the way it works and we use countdown timers just to make sure everything is uh going through the system right now as i'm talking about this erica if you're still here if you could do me a favor and put in the discount code into the uh, comments for me if you're still here. Now, there's a code for anybody that wants to upgrade. If you're watching this and you want to be a part of the OneStream Live family and you haven't done it yet, I'm going to help you out. There's a discount code that you could use. It's going to be in the comments in just a few minutes, and you'll be able to use that as you check out and uh, get a discount. If you're going from basic to standard or to pro, guess what? Any percent off for doing that with this code. That being said, let me dive back into some of these questions. Monty, do you see a question there you want to dive into or answer? Yo, I'm looking at the next one. Uh, any talk about the audio glitch thing, Stutter? Is there, it was in their bed, I still hear it now. That's so from Troy. So that's a good question, Troy. This is definitely something that they're working on. It's the reason why we're still in the beta. They haven't released it to everybody yet. There's one or two things that we are still working on with the beta and that audio piece. is definitely something that tonight, if you hear it on our side, I would definitely be sure that uh, we would to our troubleshooting or our developers so they can look at this video and figure out where the stutter may have come from. So... I want to be sure that people know that you want to have the best stream quality that you can when you're going live. The best stream quality is going to stop that glitching, the audio glitching from happening. But anything could be the case tonight. So we will, we're always using this show because I am using the studio to broadcast live. We're using this show to help with some of that troubleshooting as well. So good catch. Yeah, I like that. And then his other question, I didn't I gotta scroll up above that which is something i like is the multi-camera question um you know I, I love switching my camera angles i i think i only have like three cameras set up tonight no i guess only three, only I got, three. No, look, now look, i'm looking at my switcher over there i have one two three five cameras set up only five tips set up tonight That's um, all. but yeah, cool question because if you're not using a video switch like i am and you do it was a, a, a low bandwidth or what on your ear, but it just stopped while you were talking about it. So now, uh, can you go back to you were speaking about the multi uh, having multiple cameras coming out of the system? Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the things I like is using multiple cameras. So I use the video switcher to be able to switch between the multiple cameras. Um, but the web-based platforms, I know it's a it's a technical. Uh, hurdle to try to allow something like that because it, it's it's very intricate to, to try to make that happen uh, because right now if you want to use multiple cameras you can have them connected to your computer but you do have to go to the camera option and then select the other camera that you want to use versus having it you know readily available uh, just to click and switch to that camera angle so um, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of using video switchers anyway for something like that just because video there's a lot of data being processed by video so trying to do that in a web-based software you're putting a lot of strain on a web-based software to do something like that i do know some of the other platforms are you know working to integrate that uh but i'm a big proponent of just doing it in my video switcher so even if that feature does come out in one stream i won't use that feature just because i prefer to do it all on a dedicated device that's built to do something like that you want to be smart about what you're allowing you to handle, what your computer can handle as well. So yeah. the computer still has to be able to handle the data from those um, cameras, webcams, whatever you're using to you know, to make the multiple camera thing work. There are tons of workarounds, and uh, Monty probably has already done a video on it. I don't, I don't, I don't know, Strip. Yeah, maybe I have, man. <laughs> Okay, let me try this. Let me see if you have anything else. I know, uh, what's that? PR Investments did ask a question. Can you embed the spaces on your site and go live off spaces on spaces as well? I guess that's what they're asking. Can you do both? Example, if you are offering an exclusive class. So 
So basically, Spaces allows you to be behind a paywall, of course, and you can have, because it is a URL, depending on what type of web site you have, how you have it built, basically, you should be able to take that URL and put it on your website. Auntie, is that right? Yeah, I'm double checking right now because I was actually playing around with it a little bit earlier today because you can put on the code. So there's an embedded player that you could use on your site, but you can also use that URL on your site as well for spaces. Yeah, for so I'm looking at the password protected option as well. So yeah, there, yeah, you know, it really depends on the website essentially. So because on however you set up your website, you know, you can put a pay gate in front of it and then put this behind it. Um, you could, you know, do lead capture pages, uh, lead generation pages, and after they put in their information, they click, I want access to the video. And then the next page is where you have the embedded for the video. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Um, not just with one stream, but, you know, really how your website is set up. You can do right. a lot of that just with that. And just use the embed portion of it um, to do it. If all of this doesn't help, if it doesn't help, <laughs> inbox me. Right. Facebook, just inbox me, DJ Strick, and uh, I'll definitely help you walk through that as well. Okay. So uh, let me see here if I have other questions. So uh, what I want to scroll down to Forever Conscious Research Channel, very, very cool channel name. Do you offer customized plans? have an issue finding a uh, proper restream company that I don't really need some features uh, but require others. So that is a really, really good question. With restream, um, excuse me, with one stream live, there are what we call add-ons. So what we've showed you earlier today, and I want to go back to this page. Um, I'm going to add this onto the screen here. So these are the, uh, what we have available, of course. Uh, let me make this as big as possible. All right, so what we have available are the four plans, free plan, basic, standard, and then professional. But with all of this, they do have, have the ability to add on features to this. All right, let me see if I can go down to find some of the add-ons here. So unified chat with basic is one of the things here in the center of the page that you can add on to the basic plan and you just pay extra for that. Uh, you can add on team members uh, with the plans as an add-on. So on a basic plan, cloud storage is an add-on. Um, to S3 storage is an add-on and customized custom domains is an add-on. So there's certain features here inside of OneStream Live that is uh, based on add-ons that you can kind of customize it for however you want to use it, okay? But really, really good question. Mindy, do you see something out there as well? No, I think you covered all of it right there. Um, yeah, custom packages are, again, it's just web-based you know, kind of knowing the software, what goes into it, you know, there's certain things that um, you kind of, that are dependent on the other things. So I'm really, uh, I, I guess my question back to them was like, what features are like important, like the necessity features that you're looking for really to help you pick the best option um, plan that's available from one stream. So um, I, I'm trying to read all of this. The levels increase dramatically for what I need, but I have uh, things I want that are, are rarely used. Can we uh, trade off features? That's a good question. Number one, let me just do this for you. If you just inbox me, if you're a Facebook or a user or Instagram user, just inbox me. DJ Strick is where you can find me. Um, or on Instagram is at Strict City. Let's see. Okay. I'm trying to make sure that I read all of what they're saying. They're saying, Troy, I still 
hear that as well. Pretty annoying uh, because of the service of uh, hallway software issues. So I'm trying to figure out exactly saying that forever. If you just can continue to write for me so we can get some more details about what you're asking, that would be really, really good. Steve says, great info. Thanks. Um, and Erica is looking for the code for me. So thank you, Erica, for looking that up. Um, where can we get the item? Um, so, um, Steve, help me out what item you're asking for. Um, yes, the switcher. I guess they're talking about the switcher. The switcher hardware is smart. I was just curious. Thanks. So um, there's several different ways to kind of get with that, uh, of course, Monty actually said it. What happens is you're taking a lot of the information off of the computer by having a physical switcher, all right, for multiple cameras. There are other applications that you can use, but that is a great idea. And am I sure that it's the ATM or you have a couple of different things that you're using now? Yeah, I, I bounced between a couple because I'm always teaching or some company has sent it over for me to review on Amazon. The main one I use is the Blackmagic A10 Mini. Um, I've also used another one called the OE S OSE Tube, which is a uh, it's a very budget friendly option for four switchers. Um, and then I also use the Yolo Box. Um, it allows for three different HDMI cameras and a USB camera. If you use the Field World switcher. Um, use the Roland switcher. There's a lot of them out there um, that I've personally used, but I always kind of default to the Black Magic one. It's just the most popular one out there in the marketplace right now, and it has some other bells and whistles uh, that make it easier to uh, create because I can record all my cameras at the same time. So while I'm live streaming right now on one stream, I can record all five of my cameras to a separate hard drive. And again, you know, having things separated for its use case. As a matter of fact, this video I did, did earlier today, Strick, was talking about using the right equipment for its use case. So oh, I, I, use, I don't want to record on my computer five different camera angles, even though I could record five cameras on my computer. It's just too much load on my computer. So right. if I need to use my computer to actually do word processing or search the internet, uh, you know, there, it's going to cause other things to happen. Okay, all of a sudden things are going to go slower than they need to be. You know, um, with with live streaming, you want to check your bandwidth. If you know you're limited on your upload bandwidth, you don't want to have the kids streaming video games, downloading and uploading, and Netflix and everything going on. If you know your bandwidth is limited, so that's true. You know, I, I'm all about making sure that the tools I have serve a specific function. Um, and if you don't have all the tools to serve specific functions, you work with what you have. You just don't want to overwhelm those systems because you'll run into issues um, eventually. So I have an audio mixer just for audio processing. I have a video switcher just for video processing. I have the laptop just to go live. Um, I'm all about backups and everything. So if anything fails here, I have multiple cameras ready to go in case I need to switch. Um, multiple uh, we were talking about microphones earlier uh, multiple microphones at a drop of a dime so if i want to switch between one microphone i grab my other one over here and just start talking in here so um but no, there's a table right behind me all i have to do is just grab it <laughs> but you know it's, it's just about you know when you when you're in this space of live streaming you kind of know uh, some of the things to to be aware of so we obviously have our live streaming software which is what we're talking about um and then those uh those components that go along with it that you need you know we can't go live without a camera we can't go live without a microphone uh, but we do need to use them the way they were intended to be used so right. i think that's important for people to to note as well you know just don't go out and buy stuff just because you know somebody might mention it like even myself you know being on youtube and being on amazon live and getting products sent to me all the time and talking about them isn't the green light to go and buy that specific product. So I try to do my best at all possible to say, okay, what is your use case? Or I'll say, this is the use case for this specific device before someone just goes and gets it. And they're like, oh, it doesn't work. It's not, this doesn't work for me. I'm like, yeah, because everybody's setup is different. different. So 
Uh, you got to get what works for you. That is so right. That is so right. And you want to understand what those use cases are before you purchase, uh, just to, you know, so you don't have to take it back. You know, yeah. just kind of figure <laughs> it out. Tons of tons of ways to figure it out. I am in the one live, uh, the one stream live community. So please don't hesitate to ask me a question. If I don't know the answer, I'll call Monty. It's okay. Like we'll figure it out for you uh, to kind of help you along the way. And there's a couple more questions, Monty. I want to be sure that I do before we wrap this up today. And forever consciousness, uh, we're going to be sure I answer all of the questions. Great info. Uh, got a look. That's what, okay, that was Erica. And I put my name, guys. And the my my Facebook name and my Instagram name is in the comments. Okay, we talked about the switcher. How do we join the beta testing? Is it still open? So the beta testing is still open. You need to go into the um, the dashboard, and over the top it says beta and you just click that and you should have got an email as well so you want to check your emails for anybody to want to be a part of the beta they actually send an email out to everybody so if you're not getting one stream emails let me know that as well because uh whatever username or email address you use to set up your one stream live that's where they're sending all the correspondence so even tonight you should have got a advertisement or email about what we're doing tonight so we're trying to do a job of monty just letting the people know that we have shows monday night that can actually help them like so we're using every aspect that we can even sending emails or if you open up one stream live you would have saw the chat opened yeah. up to what we were talking about tonight so the team is really the marketing team is really working to kind of help people understand that we do have resources and this show is a resource what erica does on tuesday is a resource so those are ways that we're trying to help yeah that's good um what else do i have here so Trevor is saying i do like what i see so far what is out the gate is impressive. So it is very impressive what they've done so far. Uh, again, we're talking about a company that we got started with uh, on a price point just to do pre-recorded video. So now we're so far down the line with new features. It is just amazing. I mean, I feel good about the company. I feel so good about the company. I said, hey, I, you know, when they were looking for people to help them talk to the community, I volunteered because I wanted to help the company that I feel like is doing some things in the industry that everybody needs to be aware of. So I want to be sure to push everybody to the Facebook community, One Stream Live community. Guys, this is where we can kind of help throughout the week. So uh, I'm on YouTube on Mondays. Erica is in the community on Tuesday, but I'm always watching what's going on there and doing my best to be able to help you um with uh, any questions you might have. Yeah, OneStream isn't a brand new company, y'all. They, they, they've been around for a while. So uh, they, 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 they've built out and continuing to improve their systems and the back end and stability. So they, they know what they're doing. They're just not one of those companies that's just new and just recently popped up, you know. 2020 i talked about them but i've been i was using them for years before i wish i was you know talking about it on youtube before uh 2020 but um it was a platform that you know like it, that even if you guys find my youtube video about it the only thing i talked about is how to use the pre-recorded feature because that's all that was available was the pre-recorded feature so um I, I think I strict there was over, I don't know how many clicks, but there's over a thousand customers that I saw when I looked at my affiliate back end that have signed up because of wow. that one feature, because that was the only feature I could talk about because that was wow. the only one that, it, that, that was there. So now there's a lot more features since then, but yeah. The, so for you all that are brand new to one stream or, you know, just signed up for it, uh, know that they've been around for a while. So they definitely know what they're doing in the marketplace. So that being said, um, I'm still looking for this code. Find the code. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> the marketing team is great. So I'm actually on my phone talking to the marketing 
team. So I try to put this. Must be nice to have access. I'll I'll make sure you extra questions because when you got the, you can just go say, "Hey, marketing team, hey, I need this. Um, I need to get this back to the people." Um, But that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes, you know, we we take for granted uh, customer service, you know. So when you're paying for a software, that's one of the things you get is customer service. So, you know, one of the, I always get so many questions about, well, how come this isn't free? Well, you can have free, but know that when you have issues, you're the only one that's going to care about right. your issue. <laughs> right. When you're paying for a platform and you have customer service, like you don't have to spend so much time trying to figure out an answer if you can't. You know, jump in the uh, online chat if you can't get an answer, uh, or if you if you look in the, uh, the resources section, you can't find an answer, or if you go to uh, Facebook group, you can't find an answer, or if you go to YouTube channel, you still can't find an answer. Like, go to straight. Like, so I gave you four avenues to find an answer before you even get to him. But if you still can't find, like, you can go to him, and then he can go back to one stream and say, "Hey, I really need an answer for this. You know, what what are we doing when it comes to the this situation or this issue or, you know, how do we troubleshoot this? Can we put this on the roadmap of new things to release? That's, you know, hey. That, thank you for saying that. Like, I didn't have to say it. You said it. And and, and I appreciate that. And I hope everybody else does, too. This is one of, one of the things that um, One Stream Live is really, really trying to do. And I want, as you were saying that, I was trying to be smart, Monty, and actually type in the code uh for uh the discount that you can get like the promo code and i messed it up so i'm about to type it in to get this streamers <laughs> hub 20 so i put streamers uh h-u-m instead of h-u-b so let me do this again streamers of h-u-b 20 guys i'm putting it in the chat the right way so you can use the right code uh this is This is the right code. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. So, yes, uh, this is a great resource. So um, we are here to help as much as possible. And there is a great team behind One Stream Live, great marketing team, um, Fizza and Ama. Uh, and we, we have so many people that we're talking to. If you're in the beta group right now, you're seeing people, you're seeing like, uh, and having an opportunity to talk to some of the programmers that are helping you through whatever uh, troubleshooting you're doing for us. Like, it is incredible. So I'm in the community. Erica's in the community. And, uh, man, I'm telling you, it's just been great. Now, Monday, I want to ask you this question because you mentioned something when something is free. Like, we know that OBS is free. But wasn't that part of why you did the video? People are having an issue with using that free product, which is still out there. It's mm-hmm. what they call open source. So people have made different programs around it. And there are plugins that you could use. It's very robust if you have the technical skills to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a great free platform, but you have to learn it. And there are no dedicated educational instructional videos on how to use the platform. There are obviously YouTube creators that show you different things and how to use the platform. But if it just crashes on you and it keeps crashing on you, there's no one to go say, hey, This platform keeps crashing on me and I'm doing this paid class. I'm doing this live church service and it stops working all the time. Someone please fix this. Well, there's no one to bring that issue to. Right. And and that's that's, you know, something that you (laughs) quote unquote pay for. (laughs) You pay for not having support. So when you are using these live streaming platforms or, or software in general or hardware in general, you want to be able to go and say, hey, I have an issue. I need some support. You know, that's what they're there for. And I think the team at OneStream is really good about that. Um, unlike one of the platforms I used earlier today where I put in an email on the event on Wednesday, August 17th, and never got a response back. I called today and they act like, oh, this is the first we've heard of this. No, I've sent multiple emails and they didn't respond. But like in OneStream, you can like use the chat feature. Just right say, there. got a question, and it's right there. And you can ask the question. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. 
to the actual company chat or uh, the support. You know, a lot of people straight they'll come to. I know they come to, directly to you, and I'm like, sometimes did you even put in the you know the question on the website? Like they were actually here. There's a support team here. And that's their job is to support you as the customer. So definitely make sure you guys take advantage of that. If you have questions, no matter how small the question might be, if you don't know, you don't know. So just type it in and they're very responsive to, to give you an answer to your question. Thank you for saying that and being a part of this today. We have a statement and a question, and that'll be us for us. That'll be it for us tonight. Art says, great show. Thank you, Art. I have been with one stream now. Uh, one year so congratulations on your one year anniversary thank you for being a part of the show tonight uh be our investments when you stream live uh to other platforms do you question on how the platforms come through live stream let me see if i'm getting all this right or do you have to trigger it in each platform that is a really good question so um when you actually go live, you're actually able to check off where you want to go live. It's kind of like a, a button that once you press it, it goes from white to green. And you're actually clicking on each platform that you want to go live. And because it says, okay, set your destinations. And that's what you do. Once you set all your destinations, you hit confirm. And that's where it's going to go to all those destinations that you want it to go to. So once you go live, is going to those destinations that you set that you clicked off on. If you are playing pre-recorded videos, it's the same thing. The boxes are on the bottom, and you just click every box that you want to stream to because at that point you're setting your destinations and you hit firm, and that's where it's going to go. It's really simple. Like once you, it's a one page, like a, a website that has one page. You just go down the page and you're setting your time. You're setting if you want to have an alert, which I really like uh, the fact that you can do alerts because it makes a post for you on each platform you're going live to. And then at the bottom, you hit confirm and you're ready to go. It comes up with another screen that's saying exactly what you've done, when it will trigger them, and what locations it's going to. Very intuitive, all right, easy to use, and it absolutely works. So there you go. So thank you, um, BR Investments, for being a part of this. He said, once again, really thank you. Thank you so very much. Let's connect to be sure of that. And can you be OBS uh, for your service? So basically, you know, if you're doing one stream live, you have custom URLs. If you're able to take the stream key and a URL, wait, stream key and URL, stream URL. If you get those two things, you can connect. Really that simple. Okay. Monty, man, it's been great to have you on the yeah, show. Man. Yeah, man. Always a pleasure to hang out with you, man. The last time we were together, it was uh, in Orlando for, uh, what's that, uh, PodFest? PodFest, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, stream fest. We just need a reason to, to get together in person. <laughs> what's the next one you're going to? Where are you going to be next? I will be in Virginia Beach, Virginia at a conference I'll be speaking called Bootstrapping Redefined. So we're talking to local business owners and uh, redefining what that word bootstrapping really means. Uh, cool. So I'm looking forward to talking about that. Obviously, I'll be talking about live streaming and uh, video equipment and all that kind of stuff. And little social media strategies, but we have, we'll be doing that October, that October 2nd. It's in October. I can't remember my dates, um, but I'll be speaking. This is our third annual conference. COVID kind of knocked out uh, two of them that we were planning to have during that time frame, but uh, we've been doing this annually now. We have a great panel of people that are coming, so I'm excited for that one. That's awesome, man. I'm, I'm glad it going, it's going well for you. I'm doing people video in September. So awesome. uh, Dan Curry's event, and there's going to be a lot of uh, content creators there. And the reason why I'm mentioning this, if you're a content creator, if you're using uh, this to build a company, having the other resources of in-person conferences could go a long way. If you are ready to upgrade to a pro version or to the uh, standard version from basic, please use the Streamers Hub 20. So I put the code inside of the uh, comments. Again, that Streamers Hub 20, that's the discount code that you can get. And it's specially, I got this specially for you. 
All right. So you can use that code and kind of get your discount. Okay. Monty, thank you so very much for being part of the show tonight. Every Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you have DJ Streak on the Streamers Hub. And of course, don't forget to see Erica tomorrow. She will be in the Facebook community talking to you and helping you as well. All right, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>